There's a 69 year old male, very active, who <coughs> fell on his bicycle and sustained this left femoral neck fracture. Um, an extensive conversation was had with the patient, and we discussed his treatment options. Um, and basically, going into surgery, our plan was to first put him on a fracture table and see how the hip reduced. And if we were satisfied, we would pin it. And if not, we would go to a total hip. And we were satisfied with the reduction, and we opted for the cannulated screws. So are there studies for both the outcomes of these kind of fractures? Yeah, so, so there's a lot of literature, both for and against doing this. Um, there is a study that I found out of China five years ago showing the risk factors that affect ABN in patients with displaced femoral neck fractures. And they found that age and uh, procedure delay in terms of uh, delay to OR time from the injury uh, and screw configuration did not affect the risk of ABN, but factors that did affect the risk of ABN were the initial garden classification of the injury, uh, but the most significant was the residual post-operative displacement of the fracture. Um, so this patient is definitely at higher risk of ABN than a non-displaced fracture. And in another study I found, it looks to be about a third of patients went on to non or ABN who were 70 years or older, which this guy's 69, but uh, basically in that age group. Um, and for highly active individuals, I think that if you have a conversation with them up front, that their revision rate to arthroplasty would be significant. Um, and the study I found is around 26% revision to arthroplasty within two years. Uh, but you want to give them this high functioning person as much of a chance to continue with their level of activity. Uh, our patient understood that, so we went ahead with this. So you were yep. saying if you got a total hip, you wouldn't be able to bike? Not that you wouldn't be able to, but uh, you know, he would be able to have a more native hip and more native function uh, if this heals. And then also not have any of the complications that come with having a total hip. Uh, which are what? Dislocation, uh, prosthetic joint infection. Depend that depends on the approach somewhat, correct? Sorry. So, so what are the rates of uh, complications with this procedure? Give me ballpark it or give me the numbers that you think you have. So for ABN, it's around 30%. Um, plus. It's less than 30. Less. Yeah, but the non-union uh, non ABN rates haven't changed no, no matter the techniques or what. The, most of them say it's in 20s for both combined. So he has a 20 something, 20 to 30% chance of either getting AVN or non-union. What are the, the percentages of dislocations of hips, of total hips? Uh, it depends on the approach, but it's between like one to 2%. Okay, so is that, are those numbers different? So you're, you're saying he's, you're trying to prevent the complication of a total hip, but you're giving him a tenfold increase in complications after this procedure. But you're, you're comparing all hip fractures as this did a study out of Long Island that showed a much higher rate of union. And he presented a case here with his no com no, doesn't appear to be comminution, anatomic reduction. The only problem, I, I would have put the screws in a little further, but if you can put the screws in further, get compression, no comminution, anatomic reduction, the ASNA study, study showed that the rate of non-union and malunion or AVN is significantly less than what you're quoting because you're taking all comers. And obviously if this is comminuted and poor fixation and not reduced, then and you add those in, then you get that 20 or 30% number. But it's still going to be higher, even if you get the best chances, it's still they higher. Had, they, they, the had 90, of they had 90% union 
And who wouldn't want, who wouldn't do an operation for 90% union and have their own hip on something you don't have to open? Obviously, if this is comminuted or you didn't reduce it anatomically or you got terrible fixation, then, I, then nobody would do this. But this is one of those rare cases. I, I think they did a great job. And I don't know that anybody in the room who's 69 or 65 or 70 wouldn't want their own hip under these circumstances. What's the post-app rehab going to be? You know, obviously, with the total hip, you're going to walk right away. So how long yes. are they going to be partial weight bearing for? So we're going to make them partial weight bearing probably for six weeks. Yeah, so what's the complication rate of a total hip um, involving a revision like this with a hardware removal versus say a primary hip? I, I, I don't know the answer. I mean, is it higher if you're, if you're taking screws out and, and putting in an implant? I don't know either actually. Depends, I think it depends a little bit on how it fails. If they like completely cut out. Well, that's the, the FATE study, which was the largest study of the, the randomized trial for these, uh, which it looked at these they look at young femoral necks, but if you're the reason you're doing this procedure is you're calling this guy physiologically young. That's why you're trying to preserve his hip. If he was poor candidate, you wouldn't have even done this. So if you're calling him, if you take the the fate study, you the displaced femoral neck fractures tend to do better with fixed angle constructs, not cannulated screws. Um, but the, if you use the fixed angle construct, he's more likely to go uh, need a total hip versus to uh, have a malunion and heal that way. So why did you select the cannulated screws? I'll tell you, you were very happy with the reduction, which is great. Yeah. Then why did the, you choose the implant versus the other? The cannulated screws was the Italian preference. So we did talk about doing a fixed angle construct. Hey, Serge, if you were going to treat this case with an internal fixation, would you open it or do it closed? I usually try closed first, similarly like the way this was, because some of these non-comminuted, the reduction maneuver you flex the hip and internally rotate, and that apex anterior will line up and then get multiple views all around, because some people argue that no matter how good it looks on floor, if you open this, which some studies have done, there's always a degree, one millimeter, two millimeter of malreduction or rotationally, it, it doesn't line up. So it's not a perfect reduction, but I would usually on floor or close reduce it. If I'm happy, then would fix it. If not, then would open. I'll just jump in and give you two cents here. And, and what, one of them is that the real key is that inferior screw. And sometimes what I'll actually do is put the guide wire in, get it where I want it, and then put the screw in, make sure my threads are distal to the fracture and get good compression, and then go ahead and put the other two screws in. So my question for Todd is that this inverted pyramid construct is what's recommended why don't we go the other way and just make a pyramid or a triangle with the screws? Why? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand. You asked why we do an upright triangle? Yeah, why do you do an inverted pyramid just instead of, the, uh, instead of a regular triangle there? Uh, I think just from the biomechanical studies that have been done, um, I don't have any to quote for you today, but uh, showing that it was the most average constructs What's the motivation? Uh, you know, it keeps uh, again capturing that inferior cow power and uh, prevents it from collapsing into varus. So the forces that are going to cause it to fail are varus forces, right? And where is your strongest bone? Uh, inferior, uh, posterior. The cow power, okay, but to resist tensile forces, okay, it's on the wrong side, right? That subchondral bone in the femoral head, you're not going up all the subchondral bone, but that's weight-bearing bone is pretty strong. And, uh, you know, this also decreases the crowding that can take place around the lesser stroke and decrease the risk of a pathologic fracture. Uh, so having two screws, you know, with compression at the tensile component is what that would prevent it from fail. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a better explanation than I could have given. But the other thing is, is that if you put two screws in very close proximity inferiorly, you can fracture between the two screws and then you're at a risk for a, a fracture in the peritrochanteric region. So if they're very spread apart, you might be better, but I think the risk of iatrogenic fracture is why you wanna go with the inverted pyramid. 
Gotcha. It just, I would just, again, re reinforce, put the screws in just a little further. I mean, everything here looks perfect, but the screw threads are right at the fracture line. 